What if I told you that you could create your own AI agent without learning a thing about coding? Whether you want to build a support agent that escalates tickets, a data analyst agent that sends weekly insights to your team, or an agent that emails you every time your competitor updates their website just to ruin your weekend. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI agent in Data IQ step by step without writing a single line of code. If you're watching this, you're probably ready to jump on the AI agent train. But here's the catch. Most agents are only as smart as the data they can access. For most companies, that data is stuck in disconnected tools, scattered across teams, or buried in dashboards. There's no point building an agent that can't do its job. It can't take action, it can't automate, and it definitely can't deliver real value. So that's where Data IQ comes in. Data IQ is one of the most versatile and fastest ways to build AI agents that actually connect to your business. Not just answering questions, but taking action with your data. With this example specifically, there's no code knowledge required. So I'll show you step by step how to build a market research agent for my fake company, Bingo Labs. Now the research agent will track a list of competitors, check the web for new updates, and send me a clean summary of what's new straight to my inbox. Let's get into it. Data is the backbone of every AI agent out there. Since I'm building a market research agent for Bingo Labs, I'm starting with a simple list of competitors. Now this could be in CSV, Excel sheet, or straight from a SQL database. It doesn't really matter because Data IQ can connect to all of it. Once it's loaded, I can preview the raw data right here. Here are the company names and topics I want the agent to look up for me. Now I'll need to clean up the raw data a bit, which I can do quickly thanks to the AI assistance in Data IQ. I'll just tell it what I need it to do and watch as it generates the steps for me. Now that the data is in place, we can move on to the main event, creating the AI agent and defining what it does. Just head over to the no code agent builder in Data IQ, and this is all visual, so no coding required. We'll click visual agent, and now for the fun part, naming it. For my agent, I'll call it the market analysis tracking tool or MAT for short, because every AI agent deserves a cool name. Next, we'll pick the LLM. Now, one of Data IQ's specialties is that we can choose from literally thousands of LLMs. But in this case, we'll go with GPT-40. It's fast, it's reliable, and it's the perfect fit for what we need here. Now that said, if you're building a simple chatbot, Anthropic's Cloud 3 Haiku might be a better fit. Now it's faster and cheaper, but less powerful. And if you're not sure, don't sweat it too much. We can always change this later pretty easily in the agent builder. So next up, we need to tell Matt exactly what it needs for Bingo Labs. Now I'll keep it simple for the sake of this video, but you can go into as much detail as you need here. It's helpful to be as precise as possible so you can get the best outcome. Sometimes bullet points instead of paragraphs can give you better results depending on what you want to do, but either will work. And Matt is all set up to start doing its thing. Sort of. Although I have given Matt instructions and I've loaded in the data it will need, I still need to configure a few things, which brings us to the next step. The first thing we have to do is give Matt access to tools so it can actually do something useful. Each tool gives our agent a specific capability, looking up data or searching the web or sending an email. Now this step is about setting them up properly so Matt can give us consistent results. Now Data IQ has a selection of pre-built tools that you can customize to your liking. So the first capability we need to give Matt is the ability to actually look up company names and topics in the data set I provided earlier. So to do this, we'll create a tool. Head to the top menu and select Agent Tools. Next, we'll click New Agent Tool, and then select Look Up a Record in a Dataset. Now we'll give the tool a fitting name, in this case, Look Up Topic, and then we'll click Create. Now next, we'll select the dataset that we want Matt to look at. There it is. Then we'll pick which columns the tool should use for lookup, and which columns should be returned as outputs for our agent. In this case, it's the topics. Now for retrieval mode, we'll select single retrieval so that we return one topic at a time. And then we'll add a bit of context as to when the agent should use this tool and what information it should expect. Now this helps ensure that the right tool is used at the right time, which helps Matt run more reliably. The second tool I'll be using is called append to dataset. Whatever Matt finds, I want that information logged. Now this tool takes the search results and writes them back into a dataset so Matt can build a record of research over time. Now this is what allows Matt to actually identify new things that are worth sharing. This tool creates a growing research database that Matt can reference. Now once again, the more data, the better the agent. Now once we've created the tool, we'll simply connect it to our data set and tell it which columns to write to. And done. Now the next tool we'll add is the web search tool. This is where Matt actually leaves the local data set and pulls in new information. I'm connecting this to Google Custom Search. Now, side note, you will need a CX ID and an API key from Google Cloud. Now, once that's set up, you can configure exactly what to search for. Now, something good to do to avoid getting bad results from your search could be telling the agent to 
avoid results from things like job boards, stock sites, or forums. You can also suggest that it searches specific keywords like fundraising, new product, or partnership. All of this just ensures that Matt pulls targeted useful results, not generic noise. The last tool I'm gonna use is the send email tool. Now once Matt has done the research and logged the results, I want a clean output I can read without digging into the raw data set. Just like the other tools, we can fill in the sections to match our needs. Just be sure you insert title and message, just like I'm doing here, so the agent can properly format the email that it sends to you. Now, this tool formats the findings into a short email summary. I'll add some additional details here about what type of information should be included, and this just serves as another check to make sure that the information I get in the final report is actually useful. Now, once we've configured our tools, we'll hover over the top menu and click flow. This will take us back to our agent so we can assign all the tools that we've set up. It's fairly simple from here, but we're just gonna add the tools we created to make sure that Matt completes each step of our process. So I need it to look up the record, then do a Google search, then append the data set, and finally send me a report via email. And here we can add some additional context just to make sure that the agent knows how to use these tools and what information it can expect back from them. Now this can ensure that we get more consistent results. Now all of these tools we've created can be used by other agents I might wanna use for Bingo Labs. Once we're done, we'll click save. Now that that's complete, it's time for something fun, testing our agent. Now Matt has all his tools wired up, so we can move to the quick test tab. And now it's time to hit run and see if it actually works. Now in my case, I should get an email and there it is. Now, if things go wrong, you may just have to retrace some of the steps and see if you missed anything. But in my case, all is good. Now, I don't wanna manually request that Matt runs each time. So I'll be setting up a scenario to automate it. Hover at the top here and tap scenarios. Now in the new screen, we will click new scenario and we're not using any coding, so we'll select sequence of steps. Now give our scenario a name and click create. Now you can create your own trigger, such as when new data is added or when any specific scenario takes place. But with Matt, I want a time-based trigger. I'll set Matt to send my report every Monday at 9 a.m. Just go to add trigger, time-based trigger. Repeat every week on Monday at 9 a.m. And we'll just click save on that. And the scenario is all set up. So now I'll have an email waiting for me every Monday morning that looks like this. And that's it. In just a few minutes, I built a fully automated research agent without writing a single line of code. This isn't just some side project. This is how I keep my team up to date on the latest market developments. Matt is just one of many agents I use every week to handle boring tasks so my team can focus on bigger opportunities. And now you know exactly how to build your own. Four steps, no excuses. Thanks for watching.